like my crown roll light on the ice. Couple bad women treating me right. Diamonds dancing, get the gleam in the light. Feel my nigga, you my nigga for life. Don't forget it, cause we niggas for life. And if it's getting lit, you can hit me whether wrong or you right. I'm coming through, I bust a pole in the pipe. Niggas for life. What up, dog true crew? It did my baby. You know what I'm saying? What's going on with the fam? I hope everybody great will. You know what I'm saying? Got your money in their pocket, feeling all right, all healthy and everything, man. Feel good to be back with the team. You know what I'm saying? Feel good to be back with the squad, huh? Um, today, right now, at the moment, we about to get in the Brixton vs. Peckham. Most infamous beef in London. You know what I'm saying? I'll be liking these documentary types, bro. Um, one of the homies been told me to do it, and I was supposed to been do it, but you know, life be happening, you know what I'm saying, life be, life is life, you know, a lot of things going on, nigga, we done down there, uh, went to World War Three. you know what I'm saying, who y'all got your money on in that, you know, I don't really know where I'm putting my money at, but it's looking, you know, it's looking dicey, everything's shaky right now, so, hopefully this good out before we have some kind of crazy situation. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, no, a nuclear holocaust or something, hopefully that don't drop before this video, do so, you know, let's go ahead and get into this while we still got time, man, you ready? Let's get into it. First off, pause. Why am I seeing cheeks, bro? Why am I seeing cheeks? All right, let's go. Let's go. This video, guys, shout out to you. So that, that is not perfect, guy. You know what I'm saying? Just let you know. They're sending me over these insane socks. They sell some really cool slang type socks, which I would definitely be rocking in the summer, alongside some fresh white air forces. The link is in the description, and I want all you guys to check them out, and let me know which socks you're trying to get. My favorite are these Mad Ting socks, so let me know what your favorite is. Anyway, let's get into the video. I, I like Mad Ting. You know what I'm saying? What's up guys, your boy Kid Nerd here back with another video and we're going old school today and talking about one of the most infamous beefs in London and one of the first publicised feuds in London as well I'm talking about the Brixton vs Peckham beef in the late 2000s to early 2010s I don't want to drag on this intro for too long and check out my Instagram and Patreon in the description and be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications if you haven't already Obviously already you get my Amazon gift card winner of the video as well If you don't know yet, every video I give away a £50 Amazon gift Come card so random follow-up on my Instagram. My Insta is on the screen now and all you have to do is follow that for a chance to win an Amazon gift card. And today's winner we have PT.CFN. So if that's you, give me a message and receive your £50 Amazon gift card. Let's get into the video. Shout out to him. So before the publicised drill feuds in South London, like Moscow vs Zone 2 and Harlem vs 410, there was a very deadly war going on between Peckham and Brixton, which was one of the first nationally publicised beefs in London, gaining a lot of news coverage and came about in the early stages of YouTube, where we could see direct disses, kind of originating diss tracks how we know it today. So as I said before, the two areas in this feud was Brixton vs Peckham. So first we have Peckham, which is located in the borough of Southwark in South London, which infamously is the area where drill group Zone 2 are from. But before was on to there was the Peckham Boys, which was a gang made up of five estates in Peckham, which were the North Peckham Estate, Gloucester for Grove Estate, Willowbrook Estate, Camden Estate, and the Sumner Estate. And damn, that's like five projects for one hood. They deep as hell, nigga. God, God damn. Alright, let's go. And these estates were very well known for how bad they were. They suffered massive unemployment and crime and were very deprived. They pretty much were neglected by any law enforcement and government as well. And was even That's very American of you guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's very American poverty is, but you know, hey. Even called Peck Nam, which is a hybrid between Vietnam and Peckham, comparing the area to the Vietnam War due to how much violence was there. Throughout the Peckham Boys gang, there were different sets, like the Firehouse Crew and YBP, or Younger Peckham Boys. There were also a couple of Jamaican Yardy gangs in Peckham, like the Sunrise Crew and the Spanglers as well. And on the other side of the feud, we have Brixton, which is about an 11 minute ride from Peckham, and is located in the borough of Lambert. Brixton's main gang in this feud was called the Gas Gang, who was a gang from the Angel Town Estate. And these guys were the most violent gang in the Brixton area. 
and were even responsible for three quarters of violent incidents in Britain in 2012. The Angel Town estate where Gas Gang is from probably has the richest history of gangs in London, with many different generational gangs being bred from this estate, like the PDC gang in the 2000s who dominated the estate. Nowadays it's the Get Back Gang or 150 who take on the estate. But let's take it back a minute to 2008, where Peckham who I first mentioned was deep in a decades long with a gang called the Ghetto Boys, who was a gang from Lewisham in South London, which was a crazy war in itself, and I'll definitely do a video of that in the future. But in 2008, after decades of back and forth between the Peckham and Lewisham gangs, the younger generations in both gangs agreed to an alliance, which was fully solidified during the Notting Hill Carnival in August 2008, when the 180 members from both gangs organised a link-up at the carnival. The link-up was actually intercepted by police, because the police thought the two gangs were linking up to fight each other. But as Peckham's relationship... Uh, they about to, they might have did think they was about to link up to fight each other, but I wouldn't be surprised if police knew niggas was about to try to get some type of peaceful alliance type thing going on. The police was like, no, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? We need this shit going. This is how we get our money. You know? Because they be giving grants for busting. Police them be getting money for the destruction of that area. Oh, they need more money so they can combat all the crime that's going on in the area. That's why they be getting all these billions of dollars in the budget, you know what I'm saying? Maybe not billions, but you know what I mean, look. Relationship with Lewisham got better. Their relationship with Brixton started to worsen. See, historically, Brixton and Peckham have always had a few, even dating all the way back to the 1950s, where local schoolboys from both areas would clash, which was even more hostile after immigration, because Peckham was filled with mainly African immigrants, while Brixton was filled with mainly Caribbean immigrants. So there's always been big culture clashes there. But as I said, in 2008, the war between Brixton and Peckham was starting to become a lot more heated, and these were times where guns were much more accessible than what they are now. It wasn't uncommon for a gang member to be rolling around with a gun, just like how nowadays most gang members roll around with knives. So there was a lot of back and forth shooting between these areas. In one instance, members from a Brixton gang called OC, who were heavily allied with Gas Gang, rid out on Woolworth Road, which at the time was the territory of the Shoot Instant Gang, who were part of the Peckham side, and started shooting at two Peckham rappers called Snap Capone and Butch, who were walking down the street. Both rappers actually managed to run to a convenience store and managed to dodge the bullet. While running mm. into the shot, an innocent bystander just trying to get into the same shot was shot and killed. His name was Ryan Bravo, and he was 18 at the time. And this was one of the big turning points in making his feud widely publicised in the UK. Just to rub salt in the wounds, the OC gang made a diss track called Bullet Ridden, when the member mocked the situation with the lyrics had you running in the shop like you're buying something while a member of a peckham gang then responded to the situation in a song called real riders saying let's go them dipset ass beats let's go niggas just got to tell man i don't understand why niggas got to get on the get on the song and tell this shit bro the streets know, you know what I'm saying? The streets are well aware of what happened. The people don't need to know, nigga. Cloud ain't no other. Cracked up to be, you know what I'm saying? Can't be. Obviously referencing when Brits the members shot up with its road, which are some of the early examples of UK diss songs, referencing real moments that have happened on the streets, bringing more publicity to the feud. And the people who are up to date with London street situation at the moment will probably be quite confused, because Woolwich Road actually beats Peckham now. But that's a whole nother story to get into another time. So yeah, after this Woolwich Road shooting, many diss tracks were going back and forth between the gangs, as well as shots. In the same year of 2008 in October, Brixton older members got the drop on a Peckham member's house called Terms and waited in the parked car outside his house. When Terms appeared outside his house, they shot him on his doorstep, leaving him to die. Terms is a member of the SN1 gang in Peckham, which stands for Spare No One. And this is the same gang that the famous rapper Giggs was part of, and Giggs pays respect to Terms sometimes in his songs. It didn't take more than a month for Peckham to respond to this though. In November, Peckham members got the drop that some members from the Brixton gang OC were clubbing at a nightclub called SE1 in Bermondsey, South London, and pulled up to the club, shooting Errol Davis close range in front of 2,000 500 clubbers, which is yeah. even crazier because the murderer was never caught, despite there being thousands of witnesses at the scene. But these times, stuff like that's how that Tupac and Biggie shit went. Yeah, both situations, hella people outside. But you know what I'm saying? We in a no snitch culture. I ain't even gonna get on that. Cause I don't know how to, man. I'm, nope, I'm not even gonna do it.
Like this wasn't uncommon because there was low level security and no cameras in some of the clubs in 2008, which is something you will never see in clubs in London nowadays. Quite recently actually in 2016, the police found the same handgun which murdered Errol Davis at the nightclub in the possession of a man called Andre Chambers who lived in Woolwich, which is quite sus. It was also later found out that the same weapon which was involved in Errol Davis' murder was also involved in two other attempted murders and one murder. But Andre Chambers was never found guilty for the murders with little to no evidence apart from handling the weapon. But that's not enough to go down for a murder. While this direct war between Brixton and Peckham was occurring, there were also a lot of separate gangs and areas who joined alliances with both areas. This was basically turned into some World War 3 stuff, the South London version. One set based in Old Kent Road called OBY in South London were affiliated with Peckham. But a dispute between the members started a feud between OBY and Peckham, resulting in OBY members joining Brixton in the fight against Peckham, which was fully signified in the trap between the two gangs called Brooklyn to Baghdad. But OBY went off to a bad start in his feud after losing one of their younger members members called Baby Rider. His real name was Sunday Essier and he was a 15 year old orphan from Nigeria after his mum and dad both died when he was younger and he started to get involved in the South London feud. Before he was stabbed he pulled out an imitation firearm on four rival members. When they realised it was fake they chased him through a park while he was screaming for his life begging his killers not to kill him and spare his life. But he was ultimately stabbed nine times and left to die. So after the back and forth in 2008 Britson and Peckham was literally a no go zone and me personally growing up as a kid around these times despite me not actually living in the area and being too young to understand all this stuff. I just knew Brixton and Peckham was a place you do not go. Even the member of parliament of Peckham at the time, Harriet Harman, would wear a bulletproof vest and have security while she walked through Peckham, further embracing the name Peck Then 2009 hit and this was a big year for music from both sides, but especially from the Peckham side of things, when Giggs dropped a couple mixtapes and started putting some of his other members onto music, like Gunna D and Killer Kai. But Giggs was under a lot of pressure from the police at the time, who would cancel his shows, warn labels not to work with him, and even ban him from appearing in TV and read. The police would cancel his shows, warn labels not to work with him. What kind of hating ass shit is that? You want these niggas off the street or not? God damn. What was the last thing? Told labels not to work with him the police at the time, who would cancel his shows, warn labels not to work with him, and even ban him from appearing in TV and radio, which is something we see a lot now with police taking down these drill music videos. Well, that shit weird as hell, nigga. That shit is gone. Okay, true. They could get, start getting money and start funding these street wars. Even more. But nine times out of ten, them niggas gonna start getting money and start teaching other niggas how to get money the legal way, bro. That's how it works most of the time. You know what I'm saying? That's why niggas get soft after they get rich, bro. Because it's like, they're trying to stay. They want their new life. You know what I'm saying? They want to keep that new life that they acquired, bro. This shit is sick that they would go through all that just to block a nigga from coming up. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, bro. Well, the reason why police were so onto Giggs is because the streets were crazy at these times. And Giggs' Peckham gang, SN1, were making headlines early on in 2009 when they Spare executed no an ex-member in full daylight on a busy street because Shit. he fell out with the gang earlier on. This was a ticking point for police because it was seeming to the public at this time that the gangs that took control and could do whatever they want, which was essentially true. So police started gathering CCTV footage of previous rideouts from both Peckham and Brixton gangs in an attempt to take down some members. Police sent over this footage to Peckham members lawyers as proof of their involvement in the feud, which a member then grabbed the footage of his lawyer and uploaded it to YouTube. The original video is no longer up, but a re-upload of it is still on YouTube today, and so is Pekka members riding out in Brixton in masses. And when looking at this footage, this is some- Bro, them niggas on bikes, sliding. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, we wasn't no bike. I, it's some little niggas that do be on bikes on some bullshit out here, nigga. We wasn't no bike sliding, that shit came like when niggas start getting cars and shit, bro. Nigga. We was, a, we was going to fight niggas on bikes, but not sliding, you know? Cuz. That shit, you know how dangerous the nigga? Your chain pop, that's your ass, boy. It is a whole rap for you, nigga. That chain pop, anything. Motherfucker throw a stick through your spokes, nigga. It is a whole rap for your ass. They caught you. Fuck that. Propaganda worthy stuff. Like the caption in the videos are so funny, and all the footages just show how crazy these times really were. Like gangs were just riding their ops with 30 guys on pedal bikes, right. loaded with guns and knives. There's That's no wild. way to get away with that stuff nowadays in London. Three boys can't even walk to the shop in London without getting stopped by police, let alone that many people on bikes. Bristol gangs responded to this YouTube video in the music video called Your Liars, and the whole year of 2009 was literally just filled with violence and distracts, with some real classics like Wreckage from Peckham Younger members. Around the same time, 
time with this release, a 13 year old boy was stabbed five times in South London due to the feud between these areas, which hit national. Yeah, who stabbed a 13 year old five times, bro? That's, that's another little yummy situation. That's crazy, bro. Potential because 13 is hella young and I think this rang into a lot of people's mind that this issue was very bad Because kids as young and even younger than 13 were now known to be involved in this And on top of all this Britson and Peckham be Peckham were having their own issues inside the area And the civil war started to ignite in the Peckham area Which was fully all out after a member of the MLB gang or Madam on Brandon was shot dead by Peckham Olders MLB is a gang from the Brandon estate in South London Which is the same estate drill group Moscow 17 is based in Peckham rapper Snap Capone was linked to the murder but managed to beat the case but a member was sent to prison for hiding a gun used in the murder this created a lot of politics between peckham and the peckham affiliated gangs and eventually after many disputes members of an estate called letsom estate split away from the peckham sets and started beefing peckham which just started turning peckham very messy at the same time different peckham sets started turning on each other and because peckham is such a big area and had so many different estates the gangs just started keeping inside their estate one of these being the pelican estate which started beefing other peckham gangs after the disagreement which in december of 2010 was resulted in two members being stabbed and one being shot to death. The member who died was called Vesta and police were investigating the situation heavily at the time. So while this investigation was taking place, a younger member of a rival Peckham gang started to go onto the Pelican estate and post leaflets through the doors which said and I quote, stop snitching or we'll come for you. Which must have been hella threatening for the normal residents who just live on the estate and had nothing to do with the gang situation. Two members, Tiny Nutty and Jungle, were convicted and sent to- When you live in them areas bro, it ain't nothing you can do. To not be a part of that shit, bro. Like, sad as it sound, bro, if you living in them areas, you gotta abide by them rules, niggas, cause somebody would, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, do something to you. All that, I don't really get all that. Oh, they're a civilian type shit. Niggas, in my, niggas ain't never care about no they're a civilian, nigga. You tell, you told. And that's just it, bro. Niggas is not getting no pass because they're a civilian. Especially if you from there. Maybe if you from the hills or, you know what I'm saying, separated from all that, but nigga no. To a minimum of 30 years for the murder. Just before Tiny Shit. Nutty got booked for the murder of Esther, his older, who was called Nutty, was on remand in prison for a firearm charge. Around these times especially, it would be common for older members to have youngers, which would then take on their name essentially, just like how Tiny Nutty took on Nutty's name. A 17 year old from Peckham was also on the same charge as Nutty for the firearm. Y'all call them OGs, we be calling them OGs. Sometimes they be taking each other's name too, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times that be for little brothers, like real deal little brothers. Or a little cousin that came up right under him or something. But yeah, I get it. But just like how gang hierarchy works, other members were pressuring the 17 year old to plead guilty to the firearm charge, which would then allow Nutty to be free. The 17 year old refused though, which resulted in other members executing the 17 year old by luring him into a car and shooting him in the back of his head and then burning the vehicle on the day of the court hearing. Damn. Nutty was accused of arranging the murder because of the conflicting stories they both were telling court. And he looked even more guilty after officers found the lyrics in his cell saying, Kill your co defendant if he's snitching in court. Like, I don't think you could get any more bait than writing those lyrics. It's nope. not even like it's a catchy line or anything. I think he was just screaming, please lock me up. And that's exactly what they've done after finding him guilty of the gun charges and arranging the murder, which he is now serving 32 years for. Also, the Peckham rapper who was known by a street name, CS, was actually caught and convicted for setting the car on fire after the 17 year old was shot and killed, which he served four years for. So as you can tell, Peckham was just a mad error at this time. That nigga, four years? Well, he just got, well still, that's tampering with evidence, right, four years? That same light, bro, I might be missing something, but that same rather light. The civil war they were having was probably more active than their beef with Britain ever was. One death that really shocked the area was the death of a respected member called Taz. He died during the chase when he crashed his motorbike. Family members put up a shrine of Taz where the accident occurred, where the ops then camped outside the same day of his death. And when a member called Little Crew visited the shrine, they shot him dead the same day. So Peckham was literally a no-go zone at this point. Like literally everyone was just beefing each other. And while all this madness was happening in Peckham, Britain were having their own separate issues over in their camp. Gas Gang was starting to get heavy 
heavily involved in beefs with a lot of surrounding towns, like Britson Hill and Tulsa Hill, which are blocks of the famous dual groups 6, 7 and 8, 6. One murder that really started changing the dynamic of this beat was the murder of Tose Hill member Little Zack. It was 2011 and five gas gang members rid out in a school located in Tose Hill waiting for Little Zack to come home from school. The reason yeah, the members was targeted like Little Zack was because he was involved in the stabbing of a gas gang member two weeks before this incident. When he came out of the school, the gas gang members chased Little Zack and stabbed him to death. He was only 15 at the time and this resulted in a few separate gangs starting to turn on gas gang like ABM who was a gang located in Stockwell. At this point literally everyone was beefing everyone. South London was just a very very dangerous place and when some murders will be committed police couldn't even point it towards any specific gang just because it could have been so many different cliques like the murder of Azur Khan in 2011 he was attending the funeral of one of his gas gang friends when he was shot and killed at the burial but no one has the faintest god damn nigga trying through the burial blasting bro uh, shit sick it be like that though nigga Definitely be like that. I wonder, I wonder what shit ever changed for us. You know what I'm saying? I wonder, when I say us, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because it mainly be us who be wilding out like this on a, on a small level. Like, you, you know, the big guys, you know, the real gangs, they get to going at each other like what's going on in the world right now. And it be times of peace, but it feel like it don't really be a lot of time of times of peace for us, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always some shit going on in the streets. No matter what year, what month, what the weather like, it's always something going on in the streets. I don't know, man. Let's go. This is the idea of who it could have been. It could have been one of the many gangs in Peckham. It could have been members from Tokyo the funeral of one of his gas gang friends when he was shot and killed at the burial but no one has the faintest idea of who it could have been it could have been one of the many gangs in Peckham it could have been members from Tulse Hill, Britson Hill, ABM or just anyone from the borough of Southern there's just too many possibilities these murders amped up the fuse between gas gangs and other areas aside Peckham and it was getting to the point where both Britson and Peckham had more issues on their hands rather than each other. In 2012, three gas gang members rid out on Stockwell looking for members of a rival gang called ABM. When they found the op inside the shop, they let off fire inside the shop, which missed the rival, but ended up hitting a five-year-old, which left her paralyzed. Oh this hit nationwide God. news. And this was really the beginning of the end for gas gang, because they started getting more monitored than probably any other gang at the time. Which no, they shot a fucking five-year-old. Yes, you bringing the whole police force at you, my nigga. That shit is man. Man, to the nigga that did, they got to feel like shit, bro. Like, I know they ain't planning on doing that shit, but fuck, nigga. Y'all done, done paralyzed a five-year-old, bro. Years later, resulting in a massive raid taking down some of the key members of the gang. Nowadays, Peckham and Brixton gangs are actually linked up, with both of them having the same odds. But compared to how it was back in 2011 to 2012, both areas have calmed down a lot, with mass surveillance and of course gentrification. If you go to some of the old blocks of Peckham, where murders, robbings and shootings would be a daily occurrence, it's crazy how now them same blocks are filled with white hippies with rich parents. But to be honest, that's like most of London now. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I might do a part 2 on this because I know there's some things that I left out. But either way, it's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out. Shout out to Kid Nerd. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to document this history. Because they ain't going to talk about shit like this in the storybooks. But it's real shit that's going on in our communities. You know, but uh, yeah, this shit was dope, man. Um, I'm, this fucked me. That five-year-old shit fucked me up, bro. Damn. Man, y'all let me know what y'all thought about that. Let me know what I should react to next. Shout out to bro for uh, suggesting this video a while back. I don't know, man. That shit just hurt my little feelings, bro. Straight up. But yeah, bro. Till the next time, man. Y'all be smooth. Stay out the way. So I love. We out.